This is about the belief that my wife and I have here that baptism, the true baptism of the Holy Spirit of our God, Jesus Christ, is all about His Spirit coming to dwell within you. And that there is a way to see when they're talking about, that is in the Bible, when they're talking about the water baptism or the water immersion, the religious type baptism, man's baptism, or the true baptism, the baptism in that spirit. And usually it's when it mentions his name, we're talking about the spiritual one. And I think many of them, many of them, especially when you get to the letters of Paul, virtually every time he mentions baptism, he, if not literally every time, he is talking about the spiritual baptism. And I'm just going to bring up a couple here, not all of them, but just to give you a tool to look at so you can see for yourself. And the Spirit will lead you, if you have him, to understand the truth of this, that all baptism of salvation is that of the Holy Spirit. It is never, never of water. Even a common one that a lot of people agree on, even people that agree with me, think it's a water baptism, which is the one in Acts chapter 19. But I'm going to finish with that. But another one that virtually everyone seems to agree on is, is a baptism of water, is the one that most people use also for the Trinity, and that is in Matthew chapter 28, where the Lord is speaking to them. Now to start in verse 18, And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and in earth. Well, first off, if all authority is given to him in heaven and in earth, what does that make him? Because if he has all authority, that means no one else has it. There's one person that has all the authority, and that's Jesus. He is God manifest in the flesh. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Jesus baptizes us in his own spirit. If this was a water baptism, there would be no difference between what he and John did other than invoking his name. There has to be more than that. Because he says, make disciples. Disciples of who? You, you had disciples of John. There were disciples of John. They baptized in the baptism of repentance, of turn towards the law. That was his baptism. So he says, baptizing them, and the word for that really means immerse, immersing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. So to be immersed in the name, that's one name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, is to be immersed in the knowledge of the truth of the revelation that your God is Jesus Christ, the one who came here. Our Father in Heaven came here as the Son, who now dwells in us as the Holy Spirit. I know it says before He came to dwell in us, that's why it's a process where we learn these things. We learn the truth of who He is. Now it's all here. He has already come. So we can learn by the indwelling of the Spirit who He is, who that one God is. But He had to have it written down while He was here, so He said this. So it could be taught. So it could also be confirmed that He said He would do it, and then He and He alone did it. The Father who came as the Son now dwells in us as the Spirit. That's what makes you a disciple, being immersed in that reality. And a scripture that affirms this is in John chapter 1, where the writer says, But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, to those who believe in his name. To those who believe in his name. Those who were immersed in his name. Immersed in the name of the Father, who is the Son, who is the Holy Spirit, our one true God. He manifests Himself in these different ways. That one person, you are immersed in that through belief in His one name. The name of your one true God. In verse 13 He says, Who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. You were born of God by believing in Him, your God, Jesus Christ. And you are reborn by His Spirit, the Spirit of your God, Jesus Christ, coming to dwell within you. The Father lives in your heart through belief in His name. The name of the one who came in His name, Jesus Christ. That's how you know that is your God. That is the immersion. That is the true baptism. And I want to finish in Acts 19, where Paul baptized.
baptizes these people who only had the baptism of John, the baptism for repentance. So let's read the whole little part here, the first few verses of chapter 19. It happened while Paul was at Corinth, that Paul, having passed through the upper regions, came to Ephesus, and finding some disciples, he said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? So they said to him, We have not so much as heard whether there is a Holy Spirit. So they, they were disciples of John, but apparently they didn't even get the full message of John. Because John said that I baptize you in water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So they didn't even know about that. So apparently in a second-hand way, because we don't know if John went to Ephesus, he probably didn't, they got this kind of watered-down gospel or watered-down message of John the Baptist. So they obeyed to the extent of the knowledge they had. They knew about being water immersed for repentance. So they were disciples of John, and they believed that, but they didn't even know about the Holy Spirit. They didn't get that part. They missed it, or it wasn't taught them. So now Paul has an opportunity to teach them. Verse 3, And he said to them, Into what then were you baptized? So they said, Into John's baptism. So see, that just confirms it. They know about John's baptism. Then Paul said, John indeed baptized with a baptism of repentance, saying to the people that they should believe on him who would come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. So he basically finishes what John had said. Although now Jesus is there in the Spirit. When John the Baptist preached this message, Jesus wasn't there in the Spirit. He was there physically, in the world that is, physically, but he was not able to finish or fulfill this prophecy that John was preaching, John the Baptist was preaching. But because Jesus is here, he has poured out his Spirit over all flesh since the day of Pentecost. He was there with them when Paul said this to them. And it's by hearing the word that you are saved. Literally hearing it. Hearing it as in receiving it into your spirit. Believing it. Remember what John said earlier. As many as believed in his name. To them he gave the right to become the children of God. To those who believe in his name. So here's Paul living that out. He preaches this. And then in verse 5 it says, When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. They heard they believed it. How can you believe unless you hear? You've got to hear it. They heard it. The truth is preached to this day, and people still don't hear it, and so they think this is water baptism. It's not. They heard this, and they were immersed in the name, just as the Lord said it in Matthew 28. They were immersed in the name. They believed in the name. The name overwhelmed them. They realized at that moment that their God had come here and had given himself for them. They believed in the name. They were saved. They were born again. Not of the flesh. Let me go back to that again. Not of blood. Nor of the will of the flesh. The will of the flesh. Baptism in water is the will of the flesh. By definition, water baptism is the will of the flesh. Nor of the will of man. Which would mean maybe not, it's not your will to get baptized, but these men or men who convince you to get water baptized. That is not how you are born again. You are born of God through belief in His name, the name of Jesus Christ your God. So when they heard this, they were immersed in the name. It's the knowledge of that name, of who He is and what He did. That's what saved them. So that's my belief on what the real baptism is. There are two baptisms. There's only one that you need now. And that's the baptism of Jesus Christ, who is our baptism, just like He is our life. He is our resurrection. He is the way and the truth. He is our forgiveness. He is everything. So it would only make sense that He is our baptism. And water has nothing to do with that now. In Jesus' name, amen.